here for you. And as we see, it is Sunday and prices are going down. They've gone under this yellow line right here, which was a, a marker that we had, but it's doing it on a Sunday. And usually the problem is on a Sunday, um, prices generally will revert in the first two days of the week. So we might end up back above the 35, 36 area by Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we'll see. I would like it to continue down and fill me here, here, and there um, from 27.5 to 25.5 and then last 23.5. Uh, if I can get those fills, that would be fantastic, but we'd have to break below here. And let me show you. And this is where my real focus is, right there. So we're gonna have to break below there first in order to get to those prices. And let's move this over. Do, 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 do. So you can see that right there. So if we can break below there, then we'll probably get some panic and then hit the numbers that I want down here. Um, that would be ideal. Um, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, ah, oh no. <laughs> um, but uh, okay. Not my problem. Um, I'm hoping that I get my fills down here and here. I've got my game plan set. Nothing has changed. We are in negative until uh, the, towards the end of July. So we've got it over a month ago. And the numbers start to deviate after the 21st of July. So basically, we've got a month at the very least um, where down prices are just more likely to occur. This is a a period of time that is it's everything lined up perfectly for us to be selling during this period of time and I've been waiting for the drop and I'm finally getting it that's fantastic and this I'm fully invested a hundred percent of what I had from the past and whatnot but now I want to increase that amount because I'm taking profits and I'm plunging them back into the the market so for example, this is where your cumulative gains occur over time. I'm targeting at the very least, you know, selling 10%, maybe a little bit more above this 49K. If I can get fills all the way down to here, you know, I would have invested from my last time, um, the full amount that I invested, an additional 40%. So I'm going to be having even more. Um, so my size has increased over time and that's your cumulative profit. So if I get a hundred or two or whatever it is, um, over the next year, uh, then that it has grown. So I'm investing more than I originally started with just like back in, uh, I invested more back when the uh, prices dropped all the way to 5,000 and under, uh, I put more money in. I also bought silver and I did really well and you know so the your account expands and it grows and it's the same thing I'm just rinsing and repeating doing the same thing over so I'm putting more money in uh, cumulatively um, as prices go and I know people are looking at so like oh my god I can't believe it's going down but hey uh, when it goes back up and it breaks the all time high again within however long it decides to do it um, what are you going to say, you know, when it goes through that 118 K or if it does that soon within the next six months or so, what are you going to say? And I don't have to say nothing. I, I just redo what I do over and over again because the statistics are in my favor. I, I can see things pretty clearly and, um, it would be nice. And there's no guarantee this is going to break below here. I can't predict the future. I just only can plan for statistically what is likely to occur and to uh, go within that alignment. That's it. Uh, I'm not Miss Cleo. I don't predict the, or Nostradamus. I don't predict the future. I'm just, tr you know, trading what is there statistically that I've seen in the past that matches up and uh, has a good... Um, uh, using good analysis that is multivariable in nature, combinatorial factors and variables that 
span the horizon and not just some silly indicator that gives me uh, uh, you know a simple set of numbers to look at I mean they don't have any basis of which to trade off of it's like if you were planning uh, planting crops and you were only looking at the sun and water as two factors instead of you you know uh, soil and um, uh, you know your fertilizer or uh, you know the location that you're planting it on it's so important there's so many factors and so few people look at any really uh, good amount of factors that come together to give you statistics that work with each other and combine into giving you really good information and that's why I don't really I, I laugh when I see um, Elliott Wave or even the patterns that I use you know unless they have uh, good numbers behind them with volume and other matrix uh, of which to the metrics to to use and to understand what prices are likely to do then they don't have any basis um, so there are many factors that go into uh, the numbers and the more that you can use and you can actually see that are relevant and that give you some basis for your trades then great but if you're just going to use simple data then you might as well you know an Elliott Wave or um, Tom DeMarc's system and you know these are super basic very primitive and pr probably statistically useless you're gonna get as close to a coin flip as you can by using simplistic means and that's what all those indicators and system basically look back and they also look back at a period of time that is after the fact so they're kinda of useless that's why I don't use EMAs or Elliott Wave or um, uh, Tom DeMarks or indicators, RSI, stuff like that. They don't have any real basis in trading. There's nothing really that I can uh, statistically find in that data that is really useful. I, I can use it as part of other things that I'm doing, but there are primary things um, that you focus on too, that you, you, and those are not them. Those are like looking at the market with a, a funhouse mirror to go over and get a good picture of yourself. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> you want to use a simple mirror that reflects what is really there, right? So the same thing. You don't want to use a funhouse mirror. Um, so that's my opinion on, on types of uh, reasons why I don't use indicators, by the way. Um, now, as far as, let's, let's go back here and take a look. As far as what I'm doing, again, there's nothing for me to do. 27,500, 25,500, and 23,500. Those are three orders I have in place to buy. And um, like I said, uh, from the amounts that I used last year, I'm fully invested again back in crypto. Um, hopefully, we'll get continuation down. But this is the weekend, and what usually happens on the weekend is Monday comes along and we'll go right back up to 35, 36K because this push that was done on the weekend um, usually reverses. I would like to see that not happen and for us to continue downward, but that's up to the market and we'll see what happens. I'm not going to predict, but most of the time you'll see the price first reverse back up to where it came from. So that would be back above the mid 35k realm and we'll see if that happens other than that um, there's not much to this to, to really go over you know I've got my plan in place I just stick to it don't really care um, we did break below this yellow line so that's significant right now that basically is tells us you know um, that downward is more likely to occur. We also broke this triangle. We did not fix back up to the upside. So that's another negative thing for us. And uh, continuation downward is more likely for now. And that's basically it. Until next time, I will talk to you later.